Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We continue today with the misconception series. What are some of the misconceptions about triangles which people have? It's very crucial because it's rampant. Trines and Dustanas. Rahu Ketu also, but Trines and Dustanas. Dustanas video will come hopefully next week. So what are some of the misconceptions about trines? Trines are fifth and ninth. Although the lagna is also referred as a trine, but the lagna is also referred as the kendra. Okay, so specifically I will take only the five and nine this time. Or you could also take the lagna, but I have already made the video on <coughs> misconceptions uh, of the ascendant. So if you have not watched that, then please watch that, all right? And yes, uh, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below, exoticastrology.in. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him because we are talking of the trines today. The fifth and the ninth. The first misconception is they are known as Lakshmi Sthan. <laughs> Parashara says they are Lakshmi Sthan. But why do I say that is a misconception? It is not countering Parashara's statement. It is absolutely Lakshmi Sthan. But it is not the way you think it is. In the modern materialistic society, people interpret Lakshmi just as money. So they say, I have a planet in the fifth and the Dasha is active, for example. Oh, but I didn't become a millionaire. Parasura is lying. He's such a bloody blatant liar. I did get money, you see. When will I get the money? Paisa kab milega? Bol! That's how people behave these days. So... <clears throat> When Parashara says uh, it's Lakshmi Sthan, he doesn't mean from a materialistic perspective. Lakshmi Sthan means, means, according to Parashara, he's very clear on this. He says, this is referring to spiritual knowledge. Because if you see the uh, another word for Devi Lakshmi, Goddess Lakshmi, is uh, Chanchala. Chanchala means one who does not stay in one place. So you will see today somebody is a beggar, tomorrow he or she might become a millionaire. Racks to riches. Sometimes somebody is a millionaire and then that person is running around, you know, jail. <laughs> so, <clears throat> racks to riches, riches to racks. Sometimes you see somebody is born in a billionaire family and then, then everything is just gone. One or two mistakes they do, they lose all the money. But Lakshmi ji is constantly staying at one place. She's always at the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. She's pressing Lord Vishnu's lotus feet. So when Parashara says it is Lakshmi Sthan, that is what he means actually. These two houses are the ones who can take you to Vishnu's lotus feet. Lakshmi Sthan means that is where Lakshmi is residing. Where does Lakshmi reside? In the lotus feet of Vishnu. So that is the meaning of Lakshmi star. All right. Similarly with the ninth house. It doesn't make you a billionaire. The trines give you absolutely zero money. Zero cash. Zero uh, anything material. Zero. <laughs> of course it can give you certain things. Nothing wrong in that. But if you are talking of liquidity and cash and money and you know bank balance. So it will disappoint you. It is not like the way you think, okay? So, <clears throat> Parashara is not wrong when he says it's Lakshmi Sthan. It is our materialistic interpretation. And Lakshmi also means all auspiciousness. She is a Sarvaguna Sampanna. All the auspicious qualities. So, the trines give you happiness, goodness, all auspiciousness. Trines give you a feeling that you don't need anything material. That is what the trine is. Trines give you a feeling that you can be happy when you give, not when you take. The other houses can give you happiness when you take from them. But the trines are the only houses in the entire horoscope when you can be happy when, when you give actually. So that is why and scriptures say that happiness comes from giving, uh, giving not from taking. So 
that is why trines are the only two houses of happiness now 11th house is also the house of happiness but there's a difference between 5 and 11 11th house if activated you can get something and only then you become happy so it's dependent happiness fifth house is independent happiness where you are not dependent on money or you know anything of this world you're just happy it's your hobbies your creativity you know it's children yes that's what fifth house is and ninth house is the love of the guru the guru is the only one whose love for you is selfless there is not a single human being in this world whose love is selfless for you not even parents that is what the scripture says it's a very heavy statement everybody has some expectation from you your friends have expectation your spouse have, have expectation your parents also including your father mother their expectations may be very less but they also have expectations uh, time will tell how much who has but no love of this world is selfless okay except the love of the guru because the guru has nothing to do with your body the guru has no identification with your body okay there are there is selfless selflessness to some extent in this world but the guru's love is the only one which is totally selfless it's like totally there is no selfish agenda behind now if there's a fake guru who likes your money or likes the respect that you give then that's separate but i'm talking of genuine gurus all right so these are the only two houses where you get selfless 100% selflessness all right and i'm and i'm not referring to the father when i'm saying ninth house okay ninth house higher octave is the guru okay now of course uh, the father is also the ninth house but here when i say ninth it doesn't mean the father it means the guru okay all right so this is the first misconception that you need to clear off now what is the second misconception the second misconception is that uh, any planet in the trines is always auspicious this is another misconception now one thing is true that any planet in trines can give you an opportunity to become more spiritual that is very true so in that sense it is auspicious but are you having that necessary uh, stamina and stability and discipline to do that if not then that can be a difficult placement so for example uh, if the fifth house is linked with the eighth or the twelfth then this can show uh, you know uh, too much indulgence physically so that can uh, because because see fifth house is the house of love that feel good factor right and eighth house and twelfth house they are houses of tamas actually sexuality bed pleasures and all this so then what happens then you become more and more animalistic actually in the name of love you uh, you can't see anything it's darkness actually right fifth house is light eighth house is darkness twelfth house is darkness so the darkness covers you completely right now if the overall horoscope is very good then the light may be more but in general it doesn't happen like this and similarly if the eighth house and the ninth house are linked then sometimes uh, i have seen that uh, the person is very skeptical the person cannot the person cannot just trust anybody just they cannot trust not one or two person they cannot trust anybody else this lack of trust because ninth house is the house of jupiter jupiter is trust and faith their level of skepticism is so high that it it goes into stupidity it doesn't remain skepticism anymore so i gave the example of one person uh, he had asked me uh, something regarding bhagavad gita and i said you know this shloka krishna says like this he asked me where does krishna say like this why did you say like this i said here krishna says and he said what is the proof that this translation is uh, bona fide i said you can go and check it's written here this is how the person who has written this person is worship and then he asked, what is the person that the sent uh, the person who has learned learned the sanskrit has learned it in a right way so anything you say uh, it starts with the but but what is the proof but what is the proof but 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 but, but, but. so the only thing they know is but so they, they cannot accept anything they cannot trust their mother their father their husband their wife no it's like peak of insecurity all the time okay so therefore a planet in trying trying is only good if the person is doing some spiritual practices otherwise this can wreak havoc 
and fifth house if linked with the eighth or the twelfth this can go into gambling and shares also very dangerous because that's that is addiction all right so it really depends on the horoscope how the horoscope is rather than you know blindly judging things actually okay another misconception is uh trines are always good for career actually they are not because if you see fifth and ninth they are 12th from the sixth and the tenth so fifth house if badly associated can make you very 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 lazy fifth house can give you that feeling that why to do anything at all you know it's how the way life it is life is the way it is you know you just don't have to do anything now that can be good in one sense if the fifth house is good it is like you know you are not hankering and you are not obsessing over materialistic things so in that way fifth house is great it gives you happiness independent of your material achievements but if it is bad if it is not properly associated then it can give you you know the other side you know oh, after all what can you do it's all destiny mera to hamara to karam phute hai hamare so th this can be and um, because these two are 12th from these houses that is why they can give lot of change and transfers of transfer of job now that can be good if the overall horoscope is good for finances but if the hor horoscope is not good for finances then what can happen is they can give lack of focus in life if somebody has a has a prominent fifth and a ninth and the overall horoscope is not that good then this person lacks focus in life you will be shocked to hear this what the person lacks focus fifth and ninth should give focus right no it doesn't if the overall horoscope is not supporting focus okay then what happens this person is you know like today today i want to go into it tomorrow into you know medical science then after five years i want to go to law I, then i want to go here i want to do this i want to do that right it happens with the spouse also every 2 3 years they are changing their uh, partners because <laughs> they cannot decide with whom they should stay and this happens especially with matters of career actually okay. but it can also happen with matters of spouse right but again if uh, the person is taking the necessary steps the trines will definitely bless them but if they are just doing nothing and sitting doesn't work like that all right so these are some of the misconceptions of trines which uh, people have and i see all the time uh, people they uh, they don't know how to read the trines actually all right so it's very important that you uh, read the trines properly and another misconception is that uh, malefics are bad in trines so for example if saturn rahu ketu or mars or sun is there in the trines they spoil the trines for god's sake nobody can spoil a trine <laughs> if you say somebody spoils a trine it means you are saying somebody has spoiled lakshmi devi how is it possible it's not possible you cannot how how can you spoil lakshmi it's not possible so any planet in the trine is auspicious provided you do the spiritual practices and remedies and mantras pertaining to those planets okay but again be very careful when you do the remedies because um, if you are doing remedy for a particular planet suppose saturn is in the fifth house okay of your trine uh, of your horoscope i mean and then you are going on doing certain remedies for saturn very good you do no problem uh, but if that is here if that saturn is your sixth lord this can break your marriage this can hinder your marriage so remedy should only be done in uh after lot of deliberation all right without that it's lethal to do remedies actually okay it's like you don't go to the pharmacy and just say no give me this medicine you know it can backfire okay so please take care when you whenever you do remedies for malefics in trines similarly if there is rahu or ketu in the ninth then this can give faithlessness and tendency for atheism but the person when he or she meets a guru then the person can uh, get back to spiritual life all right so these are the ways by which the trines can help you actually okay 
and even the lords of dustanas if they are in the trines if used properly can be good okay so there you go these are some of the misconceptions which people have over. but the biggest misconception is the first one that's why i spend the most time speaking about that all right and the remaining are also there but the first one is all you know paisa kam milega nahi milega paisa trines mein koi paisa nahi right thank you very much for your patience and for your watch time and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation my website is down below exoticastrology.in god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find it